Hi there, welcome, welcome to Home Keepers. Come right on in, my friend. So glad to be here with you today and so glad you are there. It's going to be a good program because I'm going to interview an author and I love to do that because you got a lot of content when you have an author. And I'm glad to welcome to the program Diogo Estevez. And this book is hot, I mean hot off the press. I just now got it myself. I had a galley to read it, uh, so I know what's in it. But it's a, it's a brand new book called The Journey of a Kingsman. And I think that's what we all want, isn't it? That, that special journey. And it encompasses so many things, and he will tell us about it. And I'm going to see for the first time myself, because Stephanie uh, had Brandy in, and they did what they call chalk couture. And uh, it sounds so very, very interesting and something that you can do at home. We'd like to bring you a craft every once in a while. I hope it's not a lost art in the United States. And so we're going to show you that. But let me tell you first that we are viewer supported. And you can contact us with an, the 800 number, 1-800-229-0059. Or write to us at Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. We so appreciate everything we hear from you. We appreciate your comments, your sweet, sweet notes, and your contributions, and God bless you for them. Okay, now let's, let's go see what Stephanie has done and maybe get a good idea for something you can do in your own home, maybe with your own children. Take a look. It's another fun day at Homekeepers. We've brought Brandy back because she has all these amazing products, all these amazing things that you can make, that you can keep, that you can give. <laughs> just a million different ideas. I'm just so excited. We have all kinds of things here to show you, all the different things you can make with one stencil. Yep, so one she's transfer, gonna, that's it. She's going to tell you about her company. She's going to tell you about her product, and then we're going to make something. Okay. So tell me. So I'm Maker Made Co. Um, I also use Chalk Couture products to make my own Say finish. that slow. Chalk Couture. Okay, Chalk Couture. Yes. <laughs> um, I make my own finished goods and sell them and then also make bundles and put things together for makers like you who can purchase them and make your own stuff at home. So it's so easy, so fast to use, and I'm going to show you today how you can use a transfer to do a wooden tray. And the bundle's what I'm so excited about because I don't want to have to go to the craft store and pick out each little yes. single thing. Mm -hmm. I just want you to give me stuff and I will do that. <laughs> I will do that. So what are we making okay, today? Okay, so we are using the Be Humble and Kind transfer here today. Um, and you can see I have across the table, this is using one transfer and all of the different surfaces that you can use using our paste and our inks. So it's, it's so, so it's easy. it's affordable. People, you know me. I'm frugal. I'm so <laughs> frugal. You know every penny counts for me. And it this does. is affordable. It is. And it, you can use them many times okay. and you're not wasting stuff. Yep. It's a silk screen transfer that you can get eight to ten uses out of one time. So, I mean, just the possibilities are endless. So you would just peel off the backing and if you're using it for the first time, it's a good idea to fuzz the back just because you don't want it sticking. Um, it's okay if it does not fit your surface entirely. Mm -hmm. You just make sure it folds up right into there and maybe just don't go all the way to the corners. We're mm -hmm. just gonna put a little side border here. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to mix it up a little bit and use some inks and paste together on the same project. Um, just because I can and I love the shimmer of our inks. Um, we do have a gold, a copper, and a silver. So I'm gonna take this honeycomb design and I have some gold ink and you just take a little bit right there on your squeegee and you spread it around getting a nice thin layer, okay? And mm -hmm. you just kind of squeegee it right off as you're going. And so the cool thing, easy. you can save all of the extra that you have. So you're not wasting, wasting. anything. Mm -hmm. You just scrape it right off in there and it's good to go. You take your transfer, you peel it back and you have a nice I mean, shimmer. That simple. Yep, now the, that's we're gonna go ahead and do, um, if you wanna peel the bee, you can sure. work on the bee. We might as sure. well work together, right? Okay. Teamwork makes a dream work. Yes, I already have a few gifts in mind of, <laughs> that I want to do. I'm just I gonna checked out the throw website that right earlier. on here. We're gonna do a bee happy. You okay. can fuzz it first right here oh, if it's fuzzing. the first time. I just don't want it to stick to our wood. Yeah. Oh, I, I pressed it really good. It's okay. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> I fuzzed it well. <laughs> That's good. Okay. Okay, B. And with go. our paste, because they are water-based, it's a good idea to just give a couple sprays of water in there. 
Um, and then you can stir them up really well and they'll be ready for you. Is you that see, in the directions? Yes. So everything, you're not going to have to remember oh, all no, 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 of this. No. Yeah. Nope. Super easy. Everything is is there and I'm always there to answer any questions that you have. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll mix those up a little bit. I will give you the yellow. You okay. can do your B. Oh, great. And here is a squeegee. Thank you. And I will work on that be happy okay. font on the top. Just dip it, squeegee it down, scrape all of that extra off. It's so fast, so, so easy. So fast. We are knocking it out together here and yeah. then I'm gonna pull mine up. Oh my goodness. So honestly, this is like therapy to me. Look at that. Perfect. I might just sit in not my office the rest of the day and do this. <laughs> and you can, right? You right. Can. Well, I don't know if I actually can, but <laughs> yeah. I now, could I our, could try. Um, yeah, our pastes are made to be semi-permanent. So, meaning if you're putting it on a chalkboard mainly, mm -hmm. um, you can spray it off with water, wipe it down and reuse that same design. Wood is porous, so it's it's going to be on there. Okay. You know, but um, so for chalkboards, what she's saying is you could do every season, you could do mm -hmm. every month. You can use the same chalkboard yep. Yep. and and which can, saves you money too. A, t a ton of money. <laughs> A yep. ton of money. So now you're just scraping off that extra that you have, putting it right back in your jar so you can save every single bit of that stuff. Yes. It's like gold. There you it go. It is like Perfect. gold. But it's not as expensive as gold. There you gold. go. No. <laughs> okay. There you go. And you just so peel I'm that feeling. up. Peel it right up and it comes out. Get out. Yeah. Look how cute. Now this is a very simple little design. I mean, this but... is just simple and adorable. <laughs> oh my goodness. It says be happy. You can't really see the... It's a little shimmer to the yeah, gold over there on over the here. side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. Is that not adorable? And did you see how fast that was? That was so super fast. Yep. And we're like, we're trying... I mean, we're trying to be fast because we only have a few minutes. <laughs> but you could take your time. I mean, there's... But you can do it in minutes. You really you can. You can do it in minutes or you can take your time and just spend mm -hmm. an afternoon. Invite some girlfriends over. Mm -hmm. Invite your grandkids, your kids. I, oh, just whoever and just Easy. have a great afternoon of yep. fun and making things and making gifts. Invite your grandkids and your kids over and make gifts for other people. <laughs> that. There you go. <laughs> so all of Brandy's information is going to come up on the screen. Please check it out. Get some stuff, have some fun, and we'll see you next time. I'm very happy to welcome to the show Diogo Estevez, and he started his life in Brazil, and I'm glad you've come to America. Welcome. <laughs> Thank welcome you so much. It's good to be here. I want to tell you something. All, as I mentioned at the top of the show, all I had was kind of a galley of the book, and I've done hundreds of books. This is the most beautiful book I've ever done. Now, if you don't want to read it, you ought to buy it anyway. <laughs> and I'm, I'm amazed at how it's laid out and it, the way it makes it easier to read. So congratulations. Thank you. I, I think this is a real step up. I'm and, glad to hear that. <laughs> and the, the name of the book is The Journey of a Kingsman. And it takes you through so many uh, subjects that are important to your life. So I, I want to start out hearing your story because all of these things you've learned the hard way. Yes. <laughs> in, in many of them, anyway. Um, what was it like being born and growing up in Brazil? It was a lot of fun. Brazil is a beautiful place. Uh, obviously, like I was telling you earlier, every place has got its own thing. So some places have earthquakes and other places have hurricanes. We have politicians. <laughs> but other than that, it's a beautiful country. <laughs> kind of the same thing. Exactly. <laughs> now, when you uh, come to America, as you did, is it that I'm seeking a better life? Is that really what America means to the rest of the world? Exactly. Think? Well, we look at America as the, the place that actually worked out, right? And so we, we, Brazil is a beautiful country, but it's just, it seems like the more you work, the, the more behind you get. So you can never make ends meet or anything like that, with the exception of a few people as well. But if you're looking for a better life, then the U.S. is definitely the place to be. There's no doubt about that. I pray it stays that way. Absolutely. It's, uh, I think of the scripture, you know, as long as he sought the Lord, the Lord caused him to prosper. And I think America's in a flux right now that um, if, we, if we completely lose the spiritual moorings, we're like any other country. I agree. So. Um, now, you kind of at the front of the book, I, I look at you, such a successful, 
a very handsome young man, and he got a beautiful wife here with you, two children, kind of the American dream, but you came that close to suicide. Mm -hmm. How in the world did that happen? You, you appear to have everything that people are, are working for. Yeah, that's what it seemed like at the time. I wasn't really sure what, growing up, I, I, was, show, I was shown that success looked like a, something specific, and that's what I seek for all my life. What I didn't realize is that what I was seeking for would never bring me the sense of fulfillment that I was looking for. And I think that was the biggest challenge because anyone looking from the outside would believe that I had the ideal life. You know? mm -hmm. We have, especially in Brazil, we have quite a bit of following, people that actually followed us on social media even back then. And everybody would be like, my dream is to be where you are today in your position. And I would think to myself, you have no idea. Because on the outside, it looked beautiful. But on the inside, everything was just destroyed. Yeah, it, because you were successful. Yeah. Um, can you can you describe to the audience? I mean, there might be people right now that are facing what you faced, and what was it that stopped you from doing it? Because as I said, you were so close. I believe the the, the fact that I have a beautiful family that I love more than anything in this world. As I mentioned, I have a nine year old and a three year old kid, uh, Matthew and Luca, and my wife Danielle as well. We've been together for about fifteen years, married for fifteen years, but together for about seventeen. And uh, I believe this is the, the thing that stopped me from doing. I just couldn't get myself to do anything that would harm them even more than I had already harmed them over the years. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm glad you're here. Thank you. Glad you're here. Glad to be here. How, how would you describe the book? Because when you open it, there's this beautiful wheel and it deals, every uh, little spoke seems to mention something that's important to life. Yes. Uh, and kind of makes it complete. Yes. So I've always, uh, I wouldn't say always, but for, for the majority of my adult life, I've always seek to improve in every single area of my life that I possibly could in. Um, and this book represents what I've learned along the way in understanding that life is divided by multiple areas. So throughout my journey, I realized that there are at least 12 areas of life that unless we are willing to, to uh, master or ba have, live a life of a balanced life, then when we get to the end of the road, we're gonna look back and, and feel like we just lost, we sacrificed certain things to achieve others. So I, along, my, along the way, I just saw so many things that were seeking wealth and success and all these things, but at the same time, they were sacrificing everything else. They're sacrificing their, their, well, their health, they're sacrificing their relationships, their marriage, their relationship with the kids. And then at the end of their lives, they would sacrifice all of their wealth to get everything else back. But the challenge is it got no more time. Mm -hmm. so, Everything that I do it always is always with the, uh, the end in mind. So I wanted to make sure that I understood what do I want my life to look like by the time I'm 60, 70, or 80 years old and just start working backwards. Mm -hmm. And that's what this journey is really about. And when you were a child growing up in Brazil, uh, was it a ch church family? Have you always? It was a church family. So my father's and a Christian. A, yeah, so my father's a pastor and we grew up, when my father came to Christ, I was eight years old. But the church that we were a part of, a part of was a very legalistic church. So the environment that we grew up in, although it was a church environment, religious environment, gave me a very twisted view of God. Mm -hmm. I never saw God as a father or somebody loving that wanted to help me through my life. I saw God as someone who was ready to punish me mm -hmm. every time I did something wrong. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a preacher's kid too. <laughs> I, yeah, I think there's a measure of that. And... Uh, it can be very, very serious. Yes. I, I don't think it's that serious in my life, but, uh, but as I look back, uh, there could have been some more positive Absolutely. reinforcement. Um, but the truth of Jesus finally does shine through. It's amazing. Well, once you finally realize who God really is, it just changes everything about you. But if you grow up in that environment, at least it's been my experience, mm -hmm. is why would you want to have a relationship with someone that wants to do nothing but punish you <laughs> when you're an adult? Right? Good when question. you're a kid, you have to, <laughs> but not when you're an adult. <laughs> I noticed that uh, you emphasize purpose a lot, and it actually kind of uh, woke me up to look at because you hear purpose all the time. You just it's just kind of a throwaway word, but your book really emphasizes thinking thinking about the purpose. Are you talking about purpose of what we are to be, become, or what we're doing? Yeah. So I think I think we make it more complicated than it actually is. Th at least this has been my experience. Mm -hmm. 
I believe that, well, we believe that God created each and every one of us, right? Mm -hmm. And the Bible also says that he, he, gave a, he created a specific plan for each one of us. Mm -hmm. So I believe that our job in life is to find out what that plan looks like and be able to step into it and fulfill it, right? So the challenge that I had throughout my life and the reason why I went, this, how this book started or how this journey started is when I finally got down on my knees and asked God to take my life or give me purpose. Because I had achieved what most people would think success would look like, mm -hmm. but yet I was miserable. The more I grew, the more miserable I became. The math just didn't add up. So when I got down on my knees that day and I said, take my life, please, or give me purpose, I realized that there was a reason why he created me. And it wasn't just about doing things, but it was about really fulfilling his, his calling for my life. That's what it was. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think you... you uh you attained some real success at a very young age in business, right? Yes. Uh, do you think that you attained that so young that it, it really didn't have all the meaning it might have had for someone older and you got there and this isn't it? Yeah, I, I'm, I don't know. That's the, the thing, that's a million dollar question. Why did it happen the way it, was, it happened? I believe that everything in life happens for a reason and mm -hmm. couldn't have happened any other way, right? Mm -hmm. So by the time I was 29, we had already built a very successful company, but like I said, the math just didn't add up. I couldn't feel, it wasn't about success or, or having stuff, it was just about the fulfillment. So if it had happened at 49, it would have been different. I don't know, mm -hmm. I honestly don't know. But I've always been a very driven individual. So I moved to the US when I was 17 by myself because I wanted to work and do something with my life. And I've always done things in a, in a very interesting way mm -hmm. that most people would never understand. Mm -hmm. So it was no difference when I, I was 29 years of age and we built a, a very big company. Can't argue, you can't argue with success. Now you're, you're launching a new school, Kingsman Academy, exactly. right? Do you want to tell them what that's all about? So I, as I was writing this book, I started looking back at my life and just trying to understand why things happen the way they happen. Mm -hmm. Was it just because I needed to go through those experiences or was it because, because mostly I didn't have somebody next to me to mentor me through the process? Mm -hmm. And I believe that a lot of the things that happened in my life were because of the lack of mentorship. And I wanted to find a way to be able to bring like-minded individuals that maybe are going through something similar that have no idea where to run or where to mm -hmm. go to have mentors speak over their lives mm -hmm. and help them in, in any way, shape, or form. The biggest change in my life came when a mentor from Texas, Larry Titus, was introduced to me, mm -hmm. and that really changed everything. So I realized the power of mentorship, the power the mentorship has in somebody's life, and I wanted to develop an environment where people could plug in. And this is one way they can do it. The, the uh, website is on the screen. We're gonna leave it up for the rest of the program. I encourage you to write it down, and if, um, if you've just joined me, I'm talking to uh, Diogo Estevez and the book brand new. This is one of the first or second the books. Second book. Uh -huh. yes. As I mentioned earlier, <laughs> it, it is the most beautiful book and uh, easy because of the way it's laid out. Easy, easy to read. I want to congratulate you on that. You used a term that caught my eye because I think it's very true. Never heard it before, though, the grief of failure. Mm -hmm. I think people do grieve over their failures and hate themselves and really uh, have a hard time picking up and going on. How do you describe it really? Um, some people just say, you know, pick up and go on. But is there a time, time there to really uh, grieve it and let it go? Yeah, I think, I think there's a time for everything. This is one of the things yeah, that- Yeah, Solomon uh, said that. <laughs> yes, absolutely, and I have that on the book as well, the, the, whole, yeah. the entire uh, chapter, because that was one of the hardest things for me to understand. Mm -hmm. When I was with Larry, like I said, I spent 30 days at his home. Mm -hmm. The one thing that he would tell me all the time is just, Joe, relax. He would just kind of do this and relax, relax. You've never learned how to relax. Why? Because everything happens when it's supposed to happen. Mm -hmm. And I think it's just, there's a season for everything. When I look back at the entire journey, especially this last couple of years, I couldn't have planned it all. If I had planned it, it wouldn't have worked out as well. But it, because I was just willing to be obedient, everything happened the way it was supposed to. So I believe timing is just crucial. Mm -hmm. But in the grief of failure and the grief of success are very, very, they're, they're, they're more connected than you would think because a lot of people think it's hard to deal with failure, but it's a lot harder to deal with success. So you, you would <laughs> use the word grief there yes. as well? Oh, absolutely. And the success. Yeah. All right. Now, you also talk about uh, the blame game, and I think we live in a society now that 
oh, the victimhood. I, I just want to scream sometimes. <laughs> Get over yourself, for heaven's sakes. Yeah. And um, the lack of taking responsibility and the fact that everybody gets a trophy. We're, we're really in a very sick social cycle. And part of that is blaming other people in the situation. Did you do that? Oh, absolutely. That, did you? All the time. Uh -huh. Who'd you blame? Everything and everyone. Mothers usually get Oh, blamed. absolutely. <laughs> my parents, my business partners, my friends, everybody around me. Uh -huh. And that was the, the craziest thing because I didn't realize at the time that all the enemy was trying to do is just get, me by, get, get to me by myself. So if I'm blaming other people and I'm destroying the relationships that I have, all of a sudden, I'm all by myself. And he's got you. And he's got me. And yeah. that's what I didn't realize at the time that I can clearly see it today. I, I think you're uh, <clears throat> talking to people right now who could identify with that. <laughs> it's, it's the easiest thing it to is, do yeah. is to blame. Now, was there a moment when you thought, hey, this isn't working? Yeah. I'm when not I finally, blame myself anymore. Yes, when I finally got down on my knees and I said, listen, I'm done. I don't, I don't even care what happens going forward. Just guide me. That was the moment that I said, you know, the way I've been living isn't working, clearly. On the outside, people think it's working, but I'm not. But I'm not happy. I'm not fulfilled. I'm not excited. So whatever it is that you have to do with my life, do it, and I'll just follow. That's exactly what I said. You know, what you described there is one of the most important words in a Christian vocabulary, and that's surrender. Yeah. That's huge. And once people do that, yeah. as you did, then things can begin to happen. I think we have to do that first. We do. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> you are a lot into self-improvement, mm -hmm. which no one can argue with that. <laughs> but also, uh, you expressed earlier uh, th that a man, and, and his name is Larry Titus. Titus, and his wife, Debbie, has been on this show. Mm. A wonderful lady. And... It's really unusual that he just said, okay, I want to take you in and help you. So the point is that everybody needs to be mentored. It's all the way through the Bible. And I think it's lacking in the United States today. For one thing, all the fatherless homes. Yes. That, that's usually where a lot of the mentoring comes from. Absolutely. Was there a moment with Larry that, uh, that just clicked that somebody cares this much and I'm going to take what he's telling me and run with it? Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Because that's what I've been seeking the entire time. Mm -hmm. You know, whether it was through books or seminars or, or anything at all, I was just seeking for somebody, for someone that I could follow. That's all I needed. Somebody that had been there before that could teach me and just guide me along the way. So the first time that I met Larry, he was voiceless. I had read his book three days prior to meeting him because I wanted to understand who he was or, or what he was like, or at least a little bit. So when I met him, the first time I met him, I felt unconditional love from a stranger like I'd never felt before. So I, I, why did he do that? Because I asked him, I said, you mm -hmm. met me once and you invited me into your home for a month. Why did that happen? He said, because I felt the Holy Spirit telling me that I needed to bring you in. Now we're going through a very hard time in our lives and it was full of wounds. That was like an ER experience to me. Had it not been there, where would I be today? No idea. That is the absolute truth. Where, where would you have Absolutely. been? Absolutely. I, I hope a lot of people heard that today because yeah. it's probably lacking in the church a great deal, just that one-on-one -on -one mentorship. You can't do it. You just can't do it on a, you know, a broad scale. It, it has to be a one-on-one. -on -one. Um, also, in this book, he talks about just about every part of your life, and we're about to run out of time, but you talk about uh, finances. Now, y your, your business... Is, Basically, it's in finances from several real estate and what else? Insurance, investments, credit, and the debt portion as well. Anything related to money as mm -hmm. far as managing, planning, strategizing, and, and things like What's that. What's the biggest mistake that most Americans make when the, it comes to money? The biggest mistake, I would say they believe that they don't make enough money. Oh. Because it doesn't matter. Oh, it's, they all heard that. <laughs> we all believe and we, we don't make enough money. And mm -hmm. it doesn't matter how much you make. If you don't know how to manage and you don't have the right strategy in place, you could be making 50000 today a year if you're, and be in debt and have all kinds of bad problems. If you're making 100000 next year, you're still going to have the same issues, just a little bit in a higher level. Let's just put it that way. Mm -hmm. If you make two hundred, you have the same issues. It's learning basic financial education that will help you change your, your entire life. Did you, did you learn this? We're almost out of time, but did you learn this with the nuts and bolts like in your own family? Exactly. My father's always been good with his money, so mm -hmm. he's, he's been teaching me since I was a very young child. 17-year-olds, mm -hmm. uh, when I was 17, I started my retirement fund, just to give you an idea. 
Oh, <laughs> that, that tells us a lot. That's a delight to have you for sure. And let me again uh, emphasize the book, uh, Journey of a Kingsman, and I think that's what we all want to be. Now, I, I don't know when I've had a guest that just covered so much information, so I hope you got that website and that you'll get the book. I'm sure you can get it on Amazon and all those places. But right now, stay with me. I have a couple things to say before we have to say goodbye. Arthelene would like you to keep the following information handy. You may contact Homekeepers by writing to Homekeepers, P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758, or go to www.rippy.org. Remember, we always enjoy hearing from our viewers, and we thank you for your support. The following is an article I found pasted in my dad's Bible. Now, he's been in heaven for many, many years, but he loved the Word of God. And we do not know who wrote it, but it was such a wonderful definition, and I wanted to share it with you again. I think I gave it to you several years ago. And if you would like to order it, um, that information will be coming up on your screen. And if you can enclose a gift for the ministry, that would be great. But here is a definition of the Bible. This book contains the mind of God, the state of man, the way of salvation, the doom of sinners, and the happiness of believers. Its doctrines are holy, its precepts are binding, its histories are true, and its decisions are immutable. Read it to be wise, believe it to be safe, and practice it to be holy. It contains light to direct you, food to support you, and comfort to cheer you. It's the traveler's map, the pilgrim's staff, the pilot's compass, the soldier's sword, and the Christian's charter. Here heaven is restored, paradise open, and the gates of hell disclosed. Christ is the grand subject, our good its design, and the glory of God its end. It should fill the memory, rule the heart, and guide the feet. Read it slowly, frequently, and prayerfully. It is a mine of wealth, a paradise of glory, and a river of pleasure. It is given you in life, will be open at the judgment and be remembered forever. It involves the highest responsibility, rewards the greatest labor, and condemns all who trifle with its holy contents. Think about that, my friend, and if you'd like to order it, the information is there. And please join me next time, remembering there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers. 